Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome, everyone, and um, good morning, or good afternoon, good evening to the folks who are following us online, either live or um, at this moment with us. This is our Sunday meeting at Conscious Living Spiritualist Group. We are a not-for-profit organization. Um, our mission is the dissemination of spiritism. And we would like to start our meeting today by wishing everyone a happy Easter. This is a very, very beautiful and special uh, celebration where we celebrate perhaps two of the most powerful messages that Christ left for us, the one of immortality and the one of love. So as I was reflecting on Easter this morning, I was just thinking about how good it is to know that we are immortal, that our loved ones remain alive just in another um, realm of life and that love is the most powerful force. And for love, there is no distance, there is no separation. We're always together and connected. But let's start with our uh, announcements. Um, I have spoken about the Spiritist uh, magazine or Review Spiritist in um, French. This is a publication of the International Spiritist Council and um, they just uh, launched this new, um, the last um, one uh, for April, May and June of 2024. And um, primary topic is plurality of the existences. And then I noticed that the two prior ones also plurality of existence. So this is a, a, a resource. If you want to read more about spiritism, learn in English, it's available. And also um, we have our uh, course every Wednesday, uh, every other Wednesday, second and fourth Wednesday of um, the month in English for um, the Spiritist Review. And the next article that we're going to study is Plurality of Existence. So I thought it was kind of interesting. So I wanna bring this resource. Um, we're always talking about what is available in English. Um, so that's one. And we have three magazines on the topic. Uh, this is a brand new edition of the Spiritist Review uh, recently published uh, by the United States Spiritist Council as well. Um, they're publishing all the, the, the reviews, um, so we'll have one more available. And then this is our last announcement for the Florida Conference, the Spiritist Conference. It will happen next weekend in Orlando. So we have all these folks coming from Brazil to speak. It's again a big event. Everybody's invited to go. These are still uh, places you still can register and be there. There will be also a um, event for the youth um, on Sunday. And because of that, uh, the majority of us will be in Orlando next weekend uh, working and participating. So we will not be here, okay? Uh, we don't have enough, there even enough people to be only discarnate. So <laughs> we can't open our material doors because everybody, uh, all the workers will be actually attending the event in Orlando. Um, we have our ongoing courses, so I did speak about the Spiritist Review. The good thing about this course is that each week it's a new article. So even if you have not been with us, you can join at any time. Uh, we're still in the first uh, Spiritist Review. The month, it's a year of articles, so we are in March right now. And we're going to be studying that topic, plurality of existence, every second and fourth Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Uh, with myself and um, Andrea and others. Then we have uh, on Sundays, Genesis with David, who is here with us, and Carlos. Um, and at 9 p.m., so this is 9 a.m. on Sundays, 9 p.m. on Sundays, we have in the realms of mediumship. Now that course... I think is approaching the end, so we will we'll be coming up with something else. Not, not next Sunday also. Not next Sunday. So next Sunday we don't have any, the, the Genesis also will not be happening. Thank you, David. And now we get to our uh, opening reading for today from the book Happy Life, uh, 
author Joana de Angelis and um, through the mediumship of Divaldo Franco. Rejoice at every opportunity to evolve. Suffering met with resignation loses intensity. Endured in silence, it passes more quickly. You will never suffer what you do not deserve, just as you cannot leave on earth as an exception without facing suffering. God's laws are the same for everyone, replacing love in short supply. Suffering is the teacher that propels us forward. So I like to um, think of these words suffering more like, you know, pain. There is pain in growing. Uh, our kids, I don't know, uh, I remember my kids grow, getting up in the middle of the night saying that they were, their legs were hurting and for no apparent reason. So it's the pain of growth. Um, I don't know why we have such a difficult time seeing that spiritually because we understand that otherwise. If you want to become smarter, you go to the pains of studying. You go to the pains of giving up weekends. If you want to get stronger, you go to the pains of muscle soreness. But somehow we feel like we shouldn't be suffering <laughs> you know, when it comes to... So growth calls for effort. Effort calls for some natural pain. The pain that comes from exercising and the soreness that comes from that. So, and also we are always dealing with the consequences of our actions and sometimes we choose poorly and the consequences are uncomfortable. That's just the natural law and it's good that it's this way so that it tells us, hey, that was not the best choice. You can choose better for yourself. So with that, let's uh, do uh, now go to our opening prayer. So please join us. Let's just take a moment and breathe in this very, very special Sunday. We celebrate life in a very special way. And with this feeling of gratitude, of connection, we ask the good spirits to embrace us all, to guide us, to help us to stay fully present at the presentation, most importantly, to surround, to guide, to bring the intuition to our friend Mary, who will be bringing today's message so that she does so with simplicity of heart and with love. Thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity and so be it. Okay, I'm gonna close this for now. Mary. Thank you, Susanna. Thank you, everybody, for being here today, all of you at home. Hopefully, you come join us one day. And uh, welcome, everybody. I am very nervous, I have to admit. <laughs> um, speaking in public, it's not one of my biggest traits, but it's with love in my heart that I prepared this for us. And I hope to stay true to this story because it is a beautiful, touching story. And the title is An Invitation to Renewal. And in the beginning, when Abigail asked for the, to prepare the talk, I actually considered getting home and opening the, uh, the gospel at home. And, you know, like we usually do, just pick a uh, subject, study it, and, and bring it. But when I looked up the date and I saw, wow, it's going to be Easter Sunday. It is the spring equinox. We're going to be in the middle of that, like the first day of spring. So uh, nature teaches us that, that message of renewal. Um, here in Florida, we don't see it as much. I lived in New York for about 18 to 20 years, and I actually miss the seasons um, changing because you can clearly see it. Like when winter comes, there's no life. I mean, there's not one leaf on a tree. And then when spring comes, everything comes back to life. It's like magical. And God teaches us that through nature, that, you know, 
we do have the ability to change and renew ourselves. So today, we are, we're gonna talk about two people. We're gonna mention Paul of Tarsus because our friend Yudi sitting there in the back did a beautiful job bringing the story of Paul, I believe a Sunday, last Sunday or two Sundays ago. So today we're gonna to be talking about Mary of Magdala whose name is actually Miriam. And for now, we'll be calling her Miriam. And we'll find out why. Um, just one personal uh, input. My name is Mary, and I always wanted my name to be Maria. And I didn't change my name. I had the chance to do it when I became an American citizen. And I didn't do it because my dad picked my name. And he has passed away, and I didn't want to change my name. But I believe somebody changed her name to Mary, and her name was Miriam, and her parents picked that name for her. So to honor her parents and to honor her wherever she is, and I hope that she's here with us, inspiring us to, to talk about her and to learn a little bit more about her, because in the four Gospels, Mary is mentioned, but we don't know much about what she was like when she was a little girl growing up. And thank God for mediumship. Um, Tivaldo, through his mediumship, brings us the story of Mary, of Magdala, Miriam, to us in a beautiful way. And I am not gonna even try to do it as beautiful as he does because we know Givaldo. <laughs> you don't know me yet, but you can't even compare. But like I said, we will do our best. It's a beautiful story, and I hope that everyone is um, touched by it and inspired to make that move like she did. So I'm gonna try to read very little, but there are things that I do need to read just so I don't take away the essence of it. And uh, in the book, this book, The Way the Life, the Way, the Truth, and the Life by Chico Xavier, uh, by Emmanuel through Chico Xavier, we learned that, and that I will have to read. And, but before we do that, we need constant connection with God to, to do anything in life. We're like batteries, we need to turn to God because we just lose it, we don't have it yet. So that's the first advice, if you can call it that, for us today, it's to stay connected. Stay connected with Jesus, we have Jesus, we have the, the spiritist philosophy, we have our guardian angels, our spirit guides to help us, but we do need to turn to them because if we don't, they need to respect our free will. And uh, Mary, Miriam, actually didn't even have that. Like, she was just this, this woman who had a really tough, hard life, and she heard of Jesus, and she decided she was gonna do it, and she did it. So for us, it should be much easier, right? But. Most of us, and we like to say that all the time. No, we like, that's the first thing that it's not easy. That's, that's what we like to say. But we come to the question 908 in the Spirit's book. And Kardec talking, making his um, questions to the Spirits, he says, um, are our own efforts always enough to overcome the urges of our lower nature? And the spirit's answer is yes, period. Not yes, maybe, not however, no, it's yes, period. Most of the time, only very small effort is needed. You usually lack the willpower to make even that. How few of you seriously try to subdue these impulses? Now, if that's not enough to convince us, Joanna de Angelis brings in the book, Life Changes and Solutions by Devaldo Franco. She goes on to say, 
To identify with God is to enlarge the values that sleep within us and are disregarded. A spark that knows its combustion power, that finds substances that are easy to burn, can produce a fire. When someone identifies him or herself as the possessor of this resource, he can ignite the fire that devours vices and opens virgin spaces for the installation of the high potentials of personal development. Those who are aware of their own resources have measures to access the possibilities of triumph, strive to achieve them, while those who do not know them stop on a pretext of their own weakness because the truth is, they prefer it that way. So it is our preference to remain where we are. It's hard to change like Susanna mentioned before, but it's through changes that we grow. We need to push ourselves. You guys have no idea how hard it is for me to be up here right now. <laughs> it's a challenge, but here we are and we're gonna do this and we're gonna get better and better at it if given the opportunity. Now, like we mentioned, we're very familiar with the two um, characters from the gospel, Paul and Mary. And it's registered in this book that I just mentioned. And it, uh, Emmanuel goes on to say, among the figures of the good news, no one did so much violence to themselves to follow the savior as the unforgettable, obsessed woman of Magdala. Not even Paul of Tarsus would do so much later because the conscience of the apostle of the Gentiles was infatuated with the law, but not with the vices. Magdalene, however, had known the bitter depths of habits that were difficult to extirpate. She had softened herself in the contact of perverse entities, and she remained dead in the sensations that operate the paralysis of the soul. However, the encounter with Christ was enough for her to abandon everything, following his footsteps, faithful to the end in the acts of self-denial and in the firm resolution to take up the cross that belonged to her on the redemptive Calvary of her anguished existence. Understandably, many students inquire why the master did not appear first to Peter or John his mother. However, it is equally reasonable to recognize that with his unforgettable gesture, Jesus ratified the lesson that his doctrine will be for all learners, the golden code of life transformed for the glory of the good. How beautiful is that? And no one like Mary of Magdala had transformed hers in the light of the redemptive gospel like Mary Magdalene. She, she did it, and she did it without all the tools that we have so we can do it. And this is our invitation today. It's an invitation for a renewal. There's a book by Divaldo, and I am so happy. I just recently learned that it's coming out in English. And you guys need to gift yourselves with that book because there is no way I can put into, like with my own words, the beauty that is described, the story of this wonderful woman in that book. I mean, I cried rivers <laughs> reading it, preparing the study. It's really, really touching and very um, inspirational. I don't know if this, that word exists, not too sure. But anyway, um, excuse, English is not my first language. Um, that's another <laughs> challenge. But anyway, in this book, uh, Divaldo tells us that on a walk, on an outing with her, with her parents, Miriam was about 11 to 12 years old, the first time she ever heard of Jesus. And it's funny because at that age, she was attracted to the, that voice. There was a storyteller telling, um, stories about Jesus, how he would come and he would save the chosen ones. And, and she was just amazed by that talk and she got closer and she was curious. And so uh, 
she asked him, you know, when is he coming? What is he going to look like? And that's when Devaldo does a beautiful job describing it. And we don't have the time for that, but we know how beautiful Jesus is and we know how wonderful the message is. And, and that would give you an incentive to buy the book when it comes out. Which is? Pardon? Which book are you talking about? Oh, I did the book Sex and Conscience. My apologies. Okay, so... When she was 11, she first heard of Jesus, and already she felt love in her heart. She felt she loved Jesus. And she couldn't understand anything about politics, uh, you know, 11 years old, a little girl with her parents, you know? So I can just picture Mary happy on a beautiful day, and she hears about Jesus, and her heart is beating, and, uh, you know, um, uh, amazing, amazing. And uh, so, a little time goes by, and for a second time, she, she hears again, maybe 12, 13, again, she hears a prophet mention Jesus. So this brings me hope, because when we read Emmanuel, when we read it from the, from the uh, gospel, on the gospel of Luke, it says she was the woman possessed by the seven demons. And then we just hear that she walked in and she said, Master, and... And he said, Mary, and that was it. And I was like, wow, you know, but here we learned that from a very early age, she heard of Jesus and, and not once, but twice. And then a third time because, you know, time went on and she was, her parents passed away and she was sold as a slave. And by age um, 15, 16, she, uh, you know, and we're all like us women, you know, young girls at 15 and 16, we dream of true love and all of that. And she fell for somebody that told her beautiful words and, and just took advantage of her innocence. And before she knew it, she was dropped in a brothel. Very sad. I mean, you, you think, you picture this, a little girl with her parents. Short after that, she, she hears about Jesus, all these beautiful things. And then she finds herself in a place like that. But like we like to say, it is what it is. And, and Mary stayed there and, and she made sure that she could be the best that she could, I'm sure, around. And I'm sure she helped the women there, knowing everything that we know later on, what she became. And uh, well, anyway, our time is short, so we have to reduce. Um, after that, she becomes super famous, very, very rich. Everybody wants, all these men come from everywhere and they want to spend the night with the jewel of Magdala. And we'll call her Mary now because this is her new life. And uh, Mary is just, you know, settled in that, in that position. What is she gonna do? But one day, as, um, as she was going through one of her crises, as we mentioned, she was the woman with the seven demons. We believe that Mary had like psychological, like in, the, in today's psychological la language, it would be, I guess, I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist, but it would be like bipolar, like she would have like moments where she was very happy and excited and then she would come down and be depressed. So in one, when that happened to her, she would close the doors and she would refuse to receive anyone. So while going through one of these crises, one of the slaves mentions that Jesus was in town, but she can barely understand. She's like in her own um, commotion, going through her, her crisis. And again, and, and, and there I see the importance of when we find someone that wants to help us and they persist. Like some, sometimes we say to someone, oh, come, you know, and but we say we don't want to force people. But sometimes a little push, a little extra push might help someone. And it helped her because she didn't give up the first time. She, a second time she said, you know, he's here and he's come to love everyone and to change the world. And she was so excited, but Mary, nothing. But I'm sure the seed was there. And the next day, a homeless guy comes banging on the door at like 
midnight, late at night when everybody was sleeping, and he demands that he wants to see Mary. And he wants to see her, and they open the little door from the big castle, the mansion that she owned, and they say, no, no, you go away. This is no time. You're not disturbing. She's not feeling well. She's not going to see you. Give up. But he, again, he didn't give up. He kept banging and banging until they opened that door. And he made himself in, and he got in there. And when he got to her door, her servant said, no, 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 you're not bothering my lady. You're not, he said, excuse me. If she finds out that I was here and that you didn't let me in, you're going to be in big trouble, lady. That's what he said to her. Not in, my, in these words. These are my words, of course. But uh, so she, he forced himself and got into the room. And there he said, he reminded her of a passage when he, she was going on a trip. And he begged her for a coin because he was on his way to see Jesus. And he needed money to eat. He needed the money to be on the road. And, and so she sarcastically threw him a, a coin, he said, a gold coin, and said, here, you go. And if you find him and if you have gratitude in your heart, come back because I need to be cured. And I want to see if he can cure the leprosy on my soul. And, but she forgot all about that. But when he came, the beggar, and he reminded her of that, he opens his shirt and he says, look, he cured me. And I'm here to tell you, you need to go to him and you need to go now, tonight. If you don't go tonight, that's it. That, this is your chance. You need to go right now. So that brought her out of that confusion and, and her crisis. And she, uh, she looks at the slave and she says, prepare my boat, we're going now. And they take the boat and they go. Now again here, as much as I don't like to, to read and we don't have that time, but I have to read this because these are Jesus' um, words and that's a big responsibility. When Mary finally gets to, uh, to Peter's, he was at Peter's house, he says, um, wait, first I want to say, I want to go back a little bit, because this is what Jesus said to the, to the leopard man. He said, if you believe that I can heal you, heal yourself. I command you. These are Jesus' words. So I just brought this back. It's important to go back because we need to understand that we need to make our effort. Jesus is there to support us, our guardian angels. We have so much support, but we need to make the first move. It's on us. So, apologies for going back. So, he says, your opportunity to see him is only today. It will be today or never again. He doesn't sleep twice in the same house. It's nearby. And so she gets on the boat and they, and they go. And when they get there, I can just imagine the, the feelings, what was going on in Mary's heart and in her mind. She walks in and Jesus says, Mary. And she's like, Master, do you know me? And he says, this is what Jesus says to her. And this is what he says to all of us. He says, how could I not marry? I am the good shepherd. I know all my sheep one by one. So don't be surprised that I call you Mary. And she says, oh Lord, if you know me, you know my misfortune. And Jesus says, Mary, don't worry about that. And she says, but my life is a scourge. I have no reason to live. And Jesus says, oh, we always have a reason to live. But Lord, I live in a brothel. A brothel is also a home, Jesus says. And everyone has the right to a home. However, in the brothel, I am the mer merchandise, she says. So Jesus says, in fact, 
it would be preferable if instead of being exposed, you were composed. That instead of men looking for you for the trait of illusion, you would transform yourself into a reality of peace. And she goes on to say, and you know, like down herself and, and Jesus brings her up and it's beautiful. And this is gonna be another reason for you guys to get the book because it's really, really touching. And so she asked, what should I do then, sir? And he says, love, just love your children. And she says, but master, I can't have any children. I'm sterile. And Jesus says, well, I'm not talking about those children. I'm talking about the children of God. Take care of the, the mothers that can't take care of their child. Take care of the child that don't have a mother to take care. Just love. That's, that's, that's all I'm saying. Just from now on, just love. The pure love that I have come to teach and that I have come to share. And so after that, Mary leaves and she gets home and she just starts throwing everything out the window. All these expensive clothing and perfumes and, and money. And the people in town are saying, wow, she really is crazy. That's all we needed to see was this, you know, this is the last scene. She's, she's really gone mad. She doesn't care. She just gives everything away, donates the house to the poor and to the leopards and for the homeless, and takes two objects with her. It's, one of them was the dress she wore the night that she was left there. And a, vase with perfume, very expensive perfume that her mom had left her. So from that, you, we think that we can, you know, common sense will tell us that Mary's family, that she came from like a good family with good resources and, and everything to, and then to live a life like that. She wasn't born for that. That was faith, you know, just like Jesus had to go through what he went through and, and everybody else in the gospel for us to learn and to be an example for us. And so she goes on and she had, um, she was horrified by, le by leprosy. But after that, after she gives everything away, she starts following Jesus and she starts working and curing them and cooking for them from a distance because we have to remember at that time us women we weren't allowed to be not even near the husbands when they were talking it was all about the men we weren't allowed so from a distance she helped cooked and she helped in every way that she could and then finally after christ is um crucified she goes to the uh, to the apostles and she mentions and this wasn't her choice jesus asked mary to go back and tell them that she appeared to her and the apostles of course were like why would he appear to you especially thomas he was like oh yes you he would appear to you why you and nobody believed her but jesus's mother did and jesus's mother held her and told her, I believe you, my daughter. My heart of mother tells me that you were telling the truth. That's all Mary needed, right? That's all we all need. So anyway, after that, she tries to follow the apostles. She wants to go with them. They each go their way. And she goes to Peter and she says, Peter, please take me with you. I want to come with you. And Peter says, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. We all know Peter. We all have a little Peter in us too. And Peter's like, I'm sorry, but you can't come with us. Well, you know, you passed. Even I fell. Even I denied Christ three times. So I don't think it's a good idea. So Mary smiled, wished them luck, and she went her way. And it said in the book that maybe eight or 10 days later, she hears, there was an instrument that these days to come, I forget, the name of it that made noise when the leopards were coming into town. People would leave food at the door, water, and they'd run back in and for obvious reasons. And Mary heard them come and they were looking for Jesus. 
and they're like, we want to know where he is. He's going to save us. We, we heard stories, and they came from far. And Mary says, well, you, you are too late. They killed our master. And with that, Mary takes care of them, and she preaches until one day she finds out she caught leprosy, and she... Um, it, like very close, like towards the end, um, she decides to go visit Mary and and Mary, she makes it you know, blind and, and you can imagine how hard it was for her to get there, but she makes it there and, and she gets to see Mary and she sees like she's half there, half here in the process of her disincarnation, but she can, and this I'm gonna have to read real quick. She kind of saw an image like, you know, in that state of imbalance, like almost disincarnating. She sees an image and that image takes a form and she sees that it's Jesus. And Jesus says to her, you have been faithful to the end. Now rest and enter my father's kingdom. Mary embraced Jesus and fainted in that instant of indescribable emotion. The master petted her paternally, held her in his arms, and they both floated towards infinity. An ancient Greek legend tells that an astrologer who was in a distant country looking for the heavens that night saw a peculiar luminosity and noted in his studies that it was a new star. In fact, what he had seen was Mary of Magdala ascending into the kingdom of heaven, leaving a trail of light in the atmosphere. And, and, and that was it. That's the story, and very poorly told, I admit. But you will get, the, you will get that book, I'm sure you will. And so lastly, we'd like to read from this book. Since our title is An Invitation to Renewal, we're gonna end with this reading. I'm shaking like a leaf right now and you can't see it, yeah. Okay, and it's lesson 152 from Living Spring and it's by Francisco Conjudo Xavier by Emmanuel, the spirit Emmanuel. And it's titled, Come. And let him who hears say, come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. And Emmanuel explains that to us. And he says, earth is a great school of souls where students of all ages are educated. If you have reached the level of great experiences, do not worry about your ever increasing workload. Do not see enemies in those who understanding is still imperfect. Many of them have not yet left spiritual kindergarten. Always render good for evil, truth for lie, and love for indifference. The, ex the inexperience and ignorance of souls that have just begun the struggle are often very troubling to the spirit that is in search of itself. Consequently, you will often may suffer from affliction and discouragement. Do not be troubled, troubled, however. If the illusions and toys of the majority do not satisfy you anymore, it is because maturity is pointing you towards vaster horizons. Remember that only Jesus is wise and strong enough to bring you peace of mind. Listen to his divine appeal, spoken in the last words of his testament of love. Come. Nobody can keep you from approaching the spring of infinite light. The master is the eternal friend who breaks our chains and opens the doors of renewal. However, if you have, you have to be willing. The Lord never forces anything on us. Do you suffer? Are you fatigued? Do you stumble under the, the burdens of the world? Come. Jesus is holding out his arms to you. Come and meet him yet today. It is true that you have always yearned to serve, that 
The master has always been selfless and merciful towards you. But do not forget that the circumstances may change with the times and that not all days are all the same. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your patience. And with this, we invite you for our upcoming, I believe we still have time. If this is not a call, not Jesus opening his arms to us, I don't know what is. Thank you very much and have a wonderful Sunday. Oh, just one thing. We have some chocolate to make it sweeter and we're gonna leave it outside for you guys. We have a message in this one and it has our logo. And we, uh, we wanna suggest that we have chocolate to eat, but hold on to this one. Whenever things get difficult and you think it's hard, let's think about what we learned here today at Conscience Living from our wonderful, dear Mary Magdalene. Okay? Thank you. Have a good Sunday. Thank you, Mary. Um, please take your computer. Oh, thank you. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. So, just a few words. Um, I think it was um, wonderful, a gift to have you here with us. Uh, one, because we are so little workers. And to have someone who is willing to, to, to do what you did so courageously and so in such a humble way, it's in, an incredible gift for this Sunday. Um, the story is, is absolutely um, inspirational. Right, uh, the way that Jesus spoke to her, seeing her dignity. He speaks, like you said, to all of us about our dignity, about our worth, about the way that he sees us and God sees us for who we are. No matter what, there's nothing, nothing that we can do, nothing, there's no wrong that would take away from us, our dignity and our value as human beings, as children of God, and so forth. So it was a perfect message for this Sunday. One that brings hope in our humanity, one that tells each and every one of us that, as you said in the beginning, you know, we have the potential for so much. It's all within us. Oh, possible? I'm not sure if this it's thing. Switched off, yeah. Huh? Yeah, it switched off at the same time. Yeah, feedback. Let me just try to bring this back to life. The resurrection. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. It's coming back to life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there it is. Easter conscious living, the resurrection <laughs> of the computer. Good. Okay. So. Perfect. So, again, so thank you very much. And by the way, your English is excellent, excellent. So you are hired officially <laughs> for this job, not by me, but by Christ. So you can't say no, because how would you, right? And so be prepared. We'll give you enough time for the next one. I'm already looking forward to it. And with that, we are going to do our, our prayer, the second part of our meeting. If you are following us from home, you have the opportunity to do your own prayer, take some time to do your meditation. Um, if you have water, you can have your water next to you. And during this time of prayer, of meditation, the water is always blessed by the energies that our prayers produce and the good spirits who are next to us. We'll do the same here. So I'm going to ask the past givers to please um, position themselves. Okay, yeah. All right, and let's just say a few words. We definitely um, feel the presence of the spirituality here with us again in this very very special day so let us all take advantage of this moment of inspiration by surrendering by 
opening our minds and our souls to receive the blessings of this time. May the good spirits be with us. May each one who is giving the passes be also connected with love, with the purpose, with the intent of this work. Thank you so much, as so be it. Let's end our meeting today. We have some of our workers attending to the kids at this time. And why they are doing that. Let's take this minute to also offer to the world our own thoughts, our own love. We live in a world of so much suffering, of so much disconnection, so much pain. Let's imagine right now at this moment from our own hearts, a ray of light coming out. And all these rays, all this donation of love, of energy through the power of our thoughts and the power of our emotions being gathered as a gift, as a precious donation that can be taken to others in need. Because although there is so much hunger in this world. There is also spiritual starvation, emotional scarcity, despair, darkness, disconnection. We are so profoundly blessed to be here. So profoundly blessed to have the support of this faith, of this understanding, of this connection. 
So at this time we vibrate, we think of those who don't. And we offer, we offer our feelings, we offer our vibrations, our goodwill in the form of energy and love that can help others. And we ask God to help us to, to continue to maintain the connection as we go through our week. It's so easy to disconnect, to forget. Help each one of us to remember your presence within us, to remember that we too are light that we are able, that there is always hope, progress, that peace is possible. So help us to remain connected to the message, to the hope, bless our homes, bless our families, bless this world. Thank you so much once more for the opportunity of today, for the gift of our lives, and for the gift of knowing that life goes on and love is the only true force in this universe. Thank you so much and so be it. Amen. All right, dear friends, uh, thank you so much, everybody who was here today. Mary, once again, thank you so much. Thank you who watch us uh, live. Have a great day.